At what point does trolling become genuine harassment and bullying? Is it when the haters make memes about you and leave your few harshly worded comments on your platform? Dass ich meine Zuschauer beleidige. Ich habe meine Zuschauer noch nie beleidigt. Ich beleidige Leute, die mich beleidigen. Or is it when they actually try to destroy your career and show up to your house every day to torment you? More importantly, what type of individual feeds this type of behavior and attracts such vengeful haters? Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. I create weekly YouTube documentaries, and today, we'll be exploring the tragic tale of Drakenlord, a German streamer that inadvertently created one of the most cruel trolling communities on the entire internet. We'll also examine the actions from both sides that accumulated in multiple people getting arrested and even receiving jail time, an entire town being vandalized, and one man left homeless on the brink of mental collapse. To truly understand Drakenlord, aka Rainer Winkler, we have to go all the way back to his childhood and look at the events that shaped him into the man he is today. Rainer was born on the 2nd of August 1989 to Rudolf and Ritter Winkler. His father worked as a truck driver, and his mother stayed at home looking after the kids. They lived on a farmhouse near Altschalberg in Franconia, and had a somewhat comfortable lifestyle. Rainer and his sister had a relatively normal childhood, playing and interacting with other children in their small town. The first sign of trouble would appear when Rainer's parents were advised to send him to a special needs elementary school. After his performance on an enrollment test, displayed he wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. The move separated separated Rainer from his original friend group and put him into an entirely different environment that he wasn't used to. He found it difficult to make friends and lashed out at authority figures. These troublesome traits led into his sequent years in school. Skipping class, inability to cooperate with other children, and constant bullying were all unfortunate components of Rainer's teenage years. Some see this as the genesis of his behavioral issues and instability. By the 21st of July 2006, Rainer would be unable to properly graduate from secondary school and received a failing grade on his individual certificate, leaving him without a diploma. He was able to eventually find work at a local company and had stable employment for a few more years. But on the 2nd of July 2011, things would take a turn for the worse when Rainer's father unfortunately passed away from prostate cancer. Their relationship was strained at times, but Rainer always looked up to his father and learned what he could. This event had a profound impact on Rainer's life, both psychologically and with regards to his living situation. As just a month later, his mother and sister would move out, leaving Rainer alone with his grandmother and family horse, both needing to be looked after. Although Rainer inherited the house, the building surrounding it, and a sizable amount of money, he was completely overwhelmed by the responsibilities that came with it. He arranged for his grandmother to be moved to a retirement home and left the horse to roam the fields boarding the property. Rainer just turned 21 and was living alone without any supervision. Rainer was free to do whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted and how he had used that freedom would forever change the trajectory of his life and set him up for battles that he wasn't ready to fight. On the 10th of August 2011, Rainer launched his first YouTube channel under the name Drakenlord1510. He didn't upload anything to his channel for a while, but simply used a platform as a consumer of content. This was the first time Rainer had free access to the internet, since his father did his best to restrict and often completely remove his access to internet in their household. He didn't fully understand how the web worked and lacked the experience of someone who grew up using it. This meant two things. He wanted to explore and express himself as much as he could, but lacked the filter to properly regulate himself during heated situations. This would cause severe problems for him down the line. But for now, he learned new things and consumed whatever piece of content that caught his attention. By the 30th of June 2012, Rainer was already recording and uploading videos of himself, even shouting out the 8 subscribers he had at the time. Möchte ich meinen Abonnenten danken. Das ist einmal die V. Anessa, dann Scabula 1, Silent Bob, nein, Silent uh, 911 Bob, genau. His presentation left much to be desired, but he was genuinely expressing his creativity. He even shared more personal aspects of his life by making a video in memory of his father. As time went on, Rainer settled on a few topics to talk about on his channel, mostly making headbanging videos, discussing various types of metal music, and crafting let's plays on his gaming channel. From the outside looking in, it seemed like Rainer was just an ordinary metal fan, who would go on to create an account on a forum in September of 2013 with the goals of promoting his channels, 
articles and publishing the stories that he wrote. But naturally, Rayner received a bit of criticism from the viewers when it came to the quality of his content. But with Rayner being the person he is, he didn't take it too well and basically told them to leave if they didn't like it. This was one of the earliest signs of Rayner's inability to handle constructive criticism and the tendency to be aggressive towards anyone that didn't agree with him. He frequently made videos about the quote haters and made attempts to remove them from his forum. Im Gegensatz zum allgemeinen, ähm, zur allgemeinen Überlegung ist es nicht so, dass jeder im Forum äh, verarschen will. Ja, alleine schon aus dem Grund, weil ich mehr als genug von den Leuten selbst kenne. Also ich habe welche, die ich persönlich kenne und die kenne ich äh, seit zig Jahren, lange bevor ich YouTube gemacht habe und äh, Forum und was weiß ich alles. Und äh, ich muss das irgendwie komplett löschen können, da bin ich jetzt sofort alles zu löschen. He was giving those that did mean him harm recognition and validation, which only escalated the matters. But unfortunately, Rainer's worst mistake was yet to come. On the 2nd of February 2014, Rainer's temper got the better of him and uploaded a video titled, I'll finish you fucking haters, issuing a direct challenge to the haters that sent his sister a threatening voice message, a challenge that contained his house address. Irgendeiner. Ich weiß es nicht wer, es ist mir auch scheißegal. Ich weiß nicht wer es war. Irgendjemand hat meine Schwester mit einer PC-Computerstimme angerufen und gemeint, pass auf, ich weiß wo du wohnst. Wer auch immer das war, traut euch, kommt zu mir als Schauerberg 8 in 91448 Kirchen. Traut euch, kommt zu mir und legt euch mit mir an. Ich prügel die Scheiße aus euch raus. It was obvious that Rainer didn't fully understand the concept of privacy. Anyone who used the internet knows that you should never dox yourself. But to Rainer, it seemed like an empty threat to scare the hater. And it was like that for more than a year. In the meantime, Rainer fed into the hate by uploading a video titled Hater Support, where he spends most of the video ranting about haters and their various catfishing antics. This video also marked the beginning of a long-running series, Hater Support, in which he only talks about the haters. He published a follow-up video the next week and revealed that the hater had also gotten his phone number. Trolls realized that they could get an almost immediate reaction out of Rainer if they harassed him. One nasty comment could get you in one of Rainer's videos, and that was exactly what the haters wanted. So, with that being said, they were constantly on the lookout for a way to annoy Rainer. By the end of February, he broke the 100 subscriber milestone and celebrated it with an hour-long video about Nordic mythology. Rainer didn't understand that most people following him at this point were only interested in trolling, and instead let the numbers inflate his ego. In April, Rainer was forced to delete his Facebook account due to trolling. Shortly after a popular German forum named Lakshon.de discovered Rainer and flooded him with memes. The forum was to host funny images of memes from all over Germany, but now what Rainer was the main attraction. This would also be the start of a significant boost in Rainer's viewership, as new people discovered the content around him. One could argue that without this website, Rainer wouldn't have become as popular as he is. The fact that he reached 800 subscribers by May of the same year made this even more plausible. Rainer went on to have two fan meetups, one at the Out and Loud Festival and another during the Summer Breeze Festival. Rainer really enjoyed the new levels of fame and recognition that he was now getting. For the first time in his life, people actually seemed interested in Rainer. It was a good sign to him that the effort that he put into the channel wasn't a waste. But the fame only fit into his ego, consequently blinding him from the legion of trolls that were amassed behind the scenes. On the 18th of September 2014, Rainer published a video titled Dragon Lord and Dragon Lady Introduction, in which he brings one of his friends and her brother for an interview. The conversation was lighthearted, and Rainer appeared to be enjoying himself, something that the haters obviously didn't like. Within days of the video being uploaded, trolls found Dragon Lady's Facebook and began harassing her. This caused a rift between the two, and according to Reyna, she no longer wanted to be part of his video. This would have a significant impact on his motivation for YouTube, and Reyna even expressed thoughts of quitting YouTube in a video titled, Vlog of the Dragon number 18. Do I stop or continue? I don't know. For the rest of 2014, Reyna went on a rampage against the trolls. He deleted YouTube comments, banned people, and threatened them with legal action. And in the short term, Reyna was able to mitigate the trolls' efforts, but whilst doing so, he also harmed ordinary viewers that genuinely cared about his content. This turned what little supporters he had into haters. In December, trolls were sending him chocolate in the mail and got a radio interview cancelled after flooding the radio station with 1,000 angry emails. In just one year, Rainer went from signing fan autographs to turning everyone who watched him into a hater 
and unfortunately, this was only the tip of the iceberg. The first ever documented visit to Rainer's home was made by the user Sleepwalker87. This was done on the 20th of December 2014, where Sleepwalker quoted, We went up a small hill and then we saw the Casa de Winkler, majestically situated on a small hill, an extremely dilapidated, run-down property that was certainly a very nice farmhouse in the 1960s. Although it was already 2pm, no noise came from the house. We rang the bell and honked our horns, no reaction from the Lord. This gave other users on the farm the courage to pay Rainer a visit. After all, he was the one who asked him to come over. By March, two other users on Lakshon documented a visit to Rainer's dwelling, aka the Dragon Bunker, quoting, The rubbish is still in the front of the yard. In the backyard, there's even more rubbish. And the dragon didn't go to work, if he even has one. Anyway, at 11, his car was in the yard. The year had just begun and the trolls had a lot in store for Rainer. Entering July, a troll by the name of Based God went as far as swatting Rainer. They called the Fire Brigade and falsely claimed that there was a fire in the area during one of Rainer's streams. Lieben Hater, jetzt habt ihr richtig Scheiße am Arsch. Die haben jetzt den Großalarm bei mir ausgelaufen von wegen Brand und so weiter. Ihr glaubt doch nicht, dass ihr damit davon kommt. Alter, dieses Mal habt ihr echt zu viel Scheiße gebaut. Jetzt da fliegt ihr raus. Das schwöre ich euch. Jetzt erwischen wir euch. Jetzt haben wir, das war's, Alter. Das kann jetzt sein. Ihr seid tot, Alter. Ihr seid tot. Scheiß Hater, Alter. Schwöre ich euch. Tschüss. This event was not only significant in Rainer's story, but also for Germany as a country, as this was actually the first time anyone in Germany had ever been swatted before, and it was apparent that trolls were more than willing to break the law to target Rainer. The rest of the year would follow a similar pattern of outright cruel and despicable behavior, but if you thought that was bad, one of the haters was able to emotionally manipulate Rainer into thinking that she was in love with him, going as far to get him to propose to her on stream in front of thousands of viewers. Du mich heiraten willst. Nicht unbedingt der romantischste Antrag, aber ja. Also Rainer, du bist echt ein ganz besonderer Mensch. Und mit besonders meine ich, du bist der fetteste, dümmste Idiot, den ich je in meinem ganzen Leben gesehen habe. <lacht> Some of the trolls called the sick practice of trolling Rainer the Draken Games and continued to partake in it for years. They'd show up to his house and do whatever they could to get a reaction out of him, whether that be throwing bottles at him in the middle of the night. <laughs> Launching fireworks during his streams. And even pelting him with eggs. Rainer didn't take any of this lying down and retaliated by assaulting the trolls with pepper spray. And a large stick. This may have worked in the moment, but it put regular people in harm's way, and it wouldn't be long before this type of behaviour would eventually land Rainer in court, with Rainer having to pay 300 euros in property damage. The greatest feat of trolling wouldn't come until the 20th of August 2018, when several hundred haters made a march to the Drachen Bunker for Schanzenfest. Local police were able to prevent them from getting to Rainer and arrested a few of the haters after they broke into a riot. Naturally, an incident on such a massive scale attracted the attention of both German media and the government. Das Leben täglich rund live vor tausenden Sehern zur Schau stellen, das sorgt real schon mal für Probleme. Vermieter oder Lokale in den USA etwa beklagen Chaos, wenn Fans den Ort der Übertragung herausfinden, 
In Deutschland hat ein YouTuber namens Drachenlord unlängst seine Adresse veröffentlicht. This wasn't the first time Rainer made the news, but it was by far the most shocking example. Even the Bavaria Minister of Interior, Jochen Hermann, made a statement on the issue. Was uns aber besonders Sorge macht, ist, dass da jetzt inzwischen das ganze Dorf durch diese Auseinandersetzung in Mitleidenschaft gezogen werden. Die ganzen Einwohner dieses Dorfes, die mit dieser Auseinandersetzung weder mit den zum Teil abstrusen Meinungen dieses Drachenlords noch mit dem Hass der Gegner irgendetwas zu tun haben wollen. Wir werden alles dafür tun, um die Ruhe in diesem Dorf wiederherzustellen. They knew that something serious needed to be done to stop this type of thing from happening again. The battle between Rainer and the trolls harmed not just them, but everyone who lived in the district. The entire village had endured years of constant intrusions from haters who caused havoc, and it was about time to put it all to an end. In a bid to gain control over the situation, the local government made a decree to prohibit large gatherings and quote, unreasonably bother, hinder, endanger, or damage another person or the general public. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to prevent a second Schanzenfest just two months later. In all of this, Rainer went back to assaulting anyone that came close to his residence. And it didn't matter if they were trolls or simply just passerbyers. <laughs> By his 30th birthday, the almost daily trolling and harassment had truly gotten to Rainer, as he evidently had a complete meltdown on the stream. The months that followed further strained Rainer's psyche. During another one of his many court trials, Rainer was sentenced to seven months in prison suspended on probation. This was due to a pepper spray attack on a hater. He was already on probation for separate assault charges, but the court made an exception and gave him double probation. He was also given 50 hours of community service and assigned a probation officer. The court went on to offer Rainer a deal. If he voluntarily deleted his 100,000 sub YouTube channel, stopped streaming, and sold the Draken Bunker, then his record would be cleared and his debts from the numerous fines would be forgiven. But Rainer didn't seem to like these terms. He continued on as usual. He must have assumed that he would be able to fight off the haters as a one man. And army. The near constant police supervision didn't stop the haters from coming to the Draken Bunker, and Rainer finally saw the writing on the wall. He knew there was only one way to stop the trolls and escape from this vicious cycle without prison time. So, he gave in to one of the court's demands, and on the 5th of October 2021, he announced that he would be selling the Draken Bunker. I must say that it was one of Rainer's most sensible decisions, but would that be enough to save him from the wrath of the judicial system once more? Seit heute steht der Drachenlord in Nürnberg wegen Körperverletzung vor Gericht. Harald Möginger war für uns beim Prozessauftakt mit dabei. Der legt ein Geständnis ab. On the 25th of October 2021, Rainer was sentenced to two years in prison without parole. The sentencing was due to crimes of serious bodily harm and assault. Both the prosecution and defense submitted appeals immediately. The prosecutors wanted to increase his sentence, whilst Rainer's lawyer wanted to overturn the decision. Fortunately, the decision wasn't final, so Rainer was still free to do as he pleased. He went back to the Draken Bunker, bought a pickup truck, and continued streaming. To many, it seemed like the situation didn't fully register in Rainer's mind. How could he be so relaxed whilst his fate hung in the balance, and the house he lived in no longer belonged to him? To top it off, the residents of the town desperately wanted him gone, and they didn't care how. Rainer would officially say goodbye to his home in February of 2022, after he was literally escorted out by police officers. Shortly after, Rainer announced that he was going on a road trip across Germany to get away from the haters. They responded, by making an interactive Google map to track his whereabouts. By March 2022, the new owners of the Draken Bunker demolished it all to prevent trolls from gathering there. Finally, after almost a decade of non-stop visitations, the town and all its people were finally free. Rainer's appeal also went through and he was given one year of probation. However, this came with a few conditions. He was required to get psychological treatment for his adjustment disorder, contact a media consultant, report his location to the police, and donate 2,500 euros to a charity for children with cancer. The haters were of course there to cheer Rainer on as they partied outside the courtroom. One of them was even called as a witness, although with that being said, he gave his testimony whilst drunk and was promptly arrested for disorderly 
conduct. Lady Luck seemed to be on Rainer's side, as he was able to walk away from two separate prison sentences with only a slap on the wrist. But now, the only thing left to worry about was the haters. Throughout Rainer's legal battles, the haters put in extra effort to make his life as miserable as possible. They even went as far as destroying the cell tower near the Draken Bunker shortly after he moved out. And now that the trial was over, they were dead set on finding his new address. And the fact that Rainer had gotten his truck impounded after he lost his driver's license only made tracking him easier. It was also banned from every Motel 1 in Germany after the trolls found him there, further shrinking his housing options. And on the 2nd of August 2022, Rainer's financial opportunities would also shrink after his YouTube channel was banned for breaking community guidelines. Not long after, Rainer lost his TikTok and Snapchat after he made the brilliant decision to promote his OnlyFans there. But to make the matters even worse for Rainer, the ban hammer also fell on his OnlyFans account the same day. Rainer's life was in a downward spiral, but when 2020 three rolled in, it seemed like there was a glimmer of hope for him. A fundraiser was started to help Rainer get back on his way, and they were able to raise around £11,000. A few of his supporters managed to get Rainer to agree to stop begging for money online and work on himself. With that being said, there are still negatives in his life, such as files from Rainer's private cloud storage being leaked and an altercation in a train station. It's safe to say that Rainer is still trapped in a never-ending battle with the trolls, and it doesn't seem that his life is changing anytime soon. Rainer's story is indeed one of the most tragic examples of online trolling gone wrong. Instead of ignoring the hate, he fed into it, constantly allowing it to grow beyond anything he or the German government could handle. You could argue that Rainer wasn't fully able to process what was going on given his mental state, and that the haters took advantage of someone who was mentally handicapped and couldn't stop himself from responding. Given Rainer's upbringing, it doesn't seem unlikely that he developed a very aggressive reaction to bullying. But there is some justice to be had. Many of the trolls ended up facing consequences for their actions, a number of them being convicted of trespassing and assault. As of this recording, Rainer's new address isn't known to the public, and most of the trolling is now done online. As long as he's able to avoid getting his address leaked, Rainer should be able to keep the trolls at bay. But will Rainer ever be able to fully shake off the hate and live a normal life, or will he face constant harassment for the rest of his life? If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe